Welcome back. This is Let's Talk with Barimo here in the morning do show at Dysac TV. Thank you so much again for choosing Dysac TV as a channel of choice. Remember, you can send us your feedback at Dysac TV on Twitter at Dysac TV all over. Also, send us an SMS on the number on your screen on WhatsApp. The number is on your screen. Screen, send us your questions or comments, and I'll be glad to share some of that feedback later on. Today is a beautiful Wednesday, as I said. It's Wednesday is usually WCW. There's so much happening, Sagana 3. But right about now, in Let's Talk with Wairimo, our conversation is about career choice and stigma. And now I'm humbled to be hosting Stella Mutahi, who is a Larry driver. And um, let us know who is Stella. <laughs> thank <laughs> you very you much, uh, Wairimo, and thank you very much for having me on this show. Mm -hmm. My name is Stella Mutahi. Mm -hmm. I'm a mother of four daughters. Mm. Uh, and I've been in motorsport since 2009 mm -hmm. and now we're in 2022 so you can do the math mm -hmm. and see that quite it's uh, it's quite some years and uh, it's quite an honor to be here today mm -hmm. to share my story uh, and encourage especially the youth and the ladies mm -hmm. and tell them that they can think out of the box or throw away the box mm -hmm. for that matter yeah well uh, a lot of times growing up, we thought that uh, the motorsport is a male kind of field. So how did you get there? Uh, the stories are never unique mm -hmm. because uh, you find the exposure. I was exposed into motorsport just by going to watch the cars. Ah. If you go back to before 2002, mm -hmm. the World Rally Championship had one of its uh, sections here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And uh, it used to be held around Easter. And Easter was raining. And it would pass by most of the villages because they, they drove around Kenya. Mm -hmm. So on your particular day, you'd go out there, wait for the cars. And the bug just caught me. And I was wondering, how ah, are these guys in the car driving? Why are these guys swaying the car like that? What's happening in there? Mm -hmm. So my curiosity never left. Mm -hmm. I went through school, finished school, started family, started work. I'd never entered a rally car. And when they say life begins at 40, mm -hmm. it began at 40. Mm -hmm. That was the first time I hoped into a rally car. As a driver or? No. Normally to... you start as a co-driver. Uh -huh. Why is it important to start as a co-driver? Because a co-driver is the heartbeat of that car. Mm -hmm. That's the interesting part. It's mm -hmm. not the driver. Mm -hmm. Driver is just told, Let's go straight. Turn here. Who, why am I telling you to turn here? It means I have advanced notes, what we call pace notes. Mm -hmm. So you start by going to learn the pace notes. And in short, what are pace notes? It's uh, for those who remember secretarial courses, they used to do shorthand. Yes. Because you can't read the whole sentence. By the time you read the whole sentence, you've gotten round to where you're going. Mm -hmm. So they are written in shorthand and they are read in shorthand. So you must go and uh, have someone mentor you, mm -hmm. especially for those who've been there. I would like to really acknowledge Abdul Sidi, uh, Dave Masharia, who have kept up at this game where they mentored people to learn what it means to be a core driver. Mm -hmm. Now you have gone, you've learned this shorthand language. You are ready. Mm -hmm. You understand that uh, what your role will be in the car mm -hmm. with your driver. Most importantly, is you must be able to also have a driver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a marriage. Mm -hmm. On there this marriage in the car, there has to be chemistry. Uh -huh. Why? Because <laughs> you are part and parcel of making the driver go faster. They don't know where they are going. Oh. Why do I say this? If I went to Rwanda and someone read the notes, I'll go. If mm -hmm. I went to Uganda and uh, someone read the notes, I'll go. Meaning now, uh, this person is one who will make me go faster because they can see this is a flat place. I hadn't known that we are going for three kilometers. Three kilometers means step on the pedal. We may be going to a rocky terrain, a sand river. That's a person who says caution. You need to oh, so, slow. So the notes is like, uh, will the car driver have prior gone there or they are just given the notes? Yeah, what happens the day before the rally, there is mm -hmm. what we call recce. Uh -huh. Reiki, you go in a standard car, not the rally car, uh -huh. and you go slowly. There's also a speed limit. So mm -hmm. Reiki day is not rally day. Mm -hmm. You go with your notes, and what happens now is that, guess what? We have all different cars we are driving, different power, mm -hmm. 
So we will need to adjust those notes. Those are standard notes that you are given by the organizer. Mm -hmm. Then now when you go there, someone may see a bump and decide, for my car, this is just flat. Mm -hmm. I don't need to brake. There's another one who knows, if I don't slow here, I'll brake something in the car. So uh -huh. you go and modify the notes and have a look at the general terrain. Mm -hmm. Then come back with your team of mechanics. Don't forget now you have another team behind you. Uh -huh. And you sit and you give a brief. Mm -hmm. This is what we saw and this is how we shall tackle our rally. Mm -hmm. So the team is now well aware. Now come rally day, will you remember as a driver all those places you went? Mm -hmm. Maybe there are five stages. <coughs> and if there are five stages, chances are you won't remember what you saw yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's the core driver's notes that take you from one start to the end to another. Mm -hmm. How do you link up from one section and now you're going to start another 20 kilometers away mm -hmm. from the notes? Uh -huh. So now you're a core driver and uh, you've gone through this, the different stages. Yes. So at what point now do you decide I'm good enough yeah. to be the driver? Or it's they, it's, is it them who tells you now you're good enough to be the driver? No. You know, uh, this is self-driven. Because mm -hmm. just like uh, when you en enter a spot, it's you who drives yourself now. I am ready uh, to start. Where is the car? Mm -hmm. For me, it was very interesting. I got the opportunity. Here I am. I have learned no car. And I went for a function and just found somebody who had a car but no car driver. Ah. Okay. Now that's how the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. I am ready. Someone else is looking for a uh, car driver. John Mugai. And we got into the rally car and began. Mm -hmm. So I was a car driver. Mm -hmm. And I would guide anyone and tell you it's very important to start as a car driver before you switch and go to the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. Why? You understand better now what your car driver is telling you. Mm -hmm. You are more obedient. You know the people who are yeah. also, oh, they're like, oh, what are you saying? And they'll just fly. Mm -hmm. And you find guys have rolled, uh, you know, you broke the car and such things. Let's talk about your first day as a car driver. What was the experience for you? I wasn't so sure. Now, at the end of it, I wasn't too sure that this is what I wanted. The speeds and the rough terrain. And I am thrilled at some point I'm scared, you know. I, no one should lie to you that the first day is your smoothest day. It's not normally your smoothest day. Mm -hmm. But when I got out of the car, that, now the afterthought of it, wow. Mm. I'll still want to do this mm -hmm. once more. Mm -hmm. So once I got out of the rally car, I thought about it and I knew I was hooked. Mm -hmm. I would go back into a rally car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's talk about now the decision making to make it a career. At mm -hmm. what point now do you decide that this is no longer the passion I had? Yeah. I need to convert it into a career. Uh, one of the things I'll mention is about passion. Mm -hmm. And uh, passion pushes you very hard to form a career because you'll find most times we are schooled. Mm -hmm. You went through high school, you went through college, university for a course that your grades dictated you were good at. Mm -hmm. So you found yourself, you're a lawyer, you're an engineer, you are in the media. But that was because it was the education part of it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, no one allowed you to use your passion when in school. Sure, sure, sure. It was about go through school, that's what everyone your age does. Mm -hmm. But now when you're out there, you find you're the master of your game. So you may find I am educated on this, mm -hmm. but my everyday drive when I wake up is motorsport. Mm -hmm. You eat, dream, think, you know all those things? motorsport so i found out that i never tired from wanting to know more about motorsport mm -hmm. but at times when you're in a career you tire mm -hmm. you feel i just wake up to go to work yeah. and earn a salary and go home there's no drive in me it was the same for me because i was a marketer i'm a marketer by profession mm -hmm. and i found out that can't i market myself when doing what i love uh -huh. why don't i marry the two mm -hmm. instead of being in an eight to five job but I'm not really feeling it. Mm -hmm. But here, whether it's Sunday, whether it's three in the morning, anytime I'm willing and able and wanting to learn more. Mm -hmm. So that was where now I transited mm -hmm. into the world of motorsport and decided this is it. And I want to build more and learn more about this and find out also how can I make a living from it. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you when you're in the sport, don't drop what you're doing. So I'm not advising people to just drop this and pick the other. You need to transit mm -hmm. from here. Otherwise, you go home and find you have no food. Mm -hmm. Transiting now means looking at this and how can it pay me? Mm -hmm. Because uh, just like you find golf and others, there, there's no pay. 
Sure. You just go play and go home. In fact, you spend. Mm -hmm. Motorsport is the same. You spend a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens because you may ask me, Stella, but I don't even have the money. Yeah. I'll tell you, I didn't have a shilling. Mm -hmm. No, I too didn't have money. Mm -hmm. But passion can drive you to be able to draw people interested in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And therein, then you have a shilling. Mm -hmm. So I looked for sponsorship. And uh, most times you find we'll approach the sponsors because what are we offering the sponsor? So there is what I'm offering you, mm -hmm. uh, branding, I'm, off I'm offering you uh, a platform where you get to be known by more people. Mm -hmm. What are they offering me in return? That which I love. They're sponsoring a sport that I love mm -hmm. and taking care of my needs. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a marriage of sorts also. So you got the sponsor and they got you the car. Yeah, the, the car, most times you'll find uh, the acquisition of a rally car is not the same way uh, the cars we are seeing on the road. Oh. You need to meet some um, uh, requirements, mm -hmm. and those are being in the sport registered in a club. You must belong to a motorsport club. Mm -hmm. You must hold a license that is called a competitor's license. Mm -hmm. So you have your normal driving license to drive on the Kenyan roads. Then you go and acquire a competitor's license mm -hmm. from the federation this mm -hmm. one now we get from the federation mm -hmm. once you have that now it means you qualify to bring in a rally car mm -hmm. so those were requirements that i had met mm -hmm. and now with the sponsor i was able now to work my way to owning a rally car because the rally car is yours the sponsor does not have that competition license oh. it's you who has the competition license uh -huh. i know so a lot of people want to ask what kind of, <laughs> of <car. laughs> <laughs> of car that is however uh -huh. uh, before that i'd love to know you're a family person yes so the decision to like take up motorsport as a career definitely affects everyone in your family mm -hmm. so how do you then convince them that hey this is what i want to be as much as it could be dangerous yeah uh, I'll tell you, it's never easy on the family front. Mm -hmm. the, you'll find, in fact, most resistance from the family front because mm -hmm. people want comfort zones. And that's what family, your parents, your spouse, your children, everyone is wondering, why are you taking us to this spot and where people think it's a dangerous spot? Mm -hmm. You're doing high speeds. So the buy-in doesn't come easy. That I won't lie. It's your conviction and your confidence and you are you know making people feel comfortable that where i am going to mm -hmm. we will still be comfortable i'm not going to rock the ship mm -hmm. yeah you have to make them feel i am not just insane i just didn't wake up you know because they're looking at <laughs> you and wondering uh, what happened to you mm -hmm. yeah in fact at times they look at you like uh, we are not sure mm -hmm. but you have to also show them that where i am taking you i am not going to make things change in the home front so it was the same for me it wasn't easy. Uh, I'll speak about even my mom. She was like, are you sure? Do you have life insurance? You know, maybe you want to go and die and leave these young children. So those are the kind of thoughts that will go through family members' minds. Maybe you are suicidal at some point. Mm. You know, why are you wanting to move from a, a life of comfort mm -hmm. to a life where you are in the bundus driving at crazy speeds mm -hmm. and there are maybe wild animals there? Mm -hmm. But uh, they still did not, uh, they were not very harsh. Mm -hmm. They were like, if you're happy and you know it will balance the family, you go for it. Well, before we take a short break, mm -hmm. I know there's a, a person watching you out there and wondering if what's the secret to make them believe that this is what I want in life? Because a lot of people are stuck like, uh, between what they want and what their family wants. So yes. I want you to talk to that one person watching you. Uh -huh. I'll tell you one thing, and uh, it is you who draws the crowds, your parents being there. It's that confidence, it's that convincing, and it's that living it. You must live it. Because as a parent, I'm only worried. I'm worried that when I let you go there, are you going to hack it? Are you going to be able to convince me as a parent? So one of the things I can advise someone who's transiting from one career to another, and especially where it's motorsport based, you really have to stay the course. You really have to prove yourself. Mm -hmm. It's not going to come in one day, but that consistency, that uh, confidence, that showing the parent, I really know that this is a decision, I got it. Mm -hmm. You have to stay there. Mm -hmm. They will be apprehensive, they will lean back, they will watch. That period of watching 
is a period that you convince them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I won't tell anybody that uh, walk away. And again, listen to them. They are your elders, especially where parents are involved. Don't just say, this is my life. Mm -hmm. No, carry people along with you in a respectable uh, way. Mm -hmm. Tell them, I know how you're feeling, but please give me this opportunity to just prove to you. Mm -hmm. Should it not work, I will go back to what I know. Right. So let people have a relief that uh, you are open to the choices and uh, whatever happens there. Mm -hmm. Then people will feel a sense of relief and mm -hmm. say, fine, you go ahead, you'll have their blessings. Wow. Yes. So that thought takes us to a short commercial break. This is Let's Talk with Warimo in Morning Dew Show here at Dysart TV. Don't go too far, we are coming back. With Verimo, today we are talking about career and stigma. Well, <laughs> we've overtaken that, yes, quite <laughs> in a way because your story is just as interesting to listen and quite I inspirational. So, but however, I'm still thinking about the stigma part where this is like a male dominated thing. Do they harass you when you go out there? Uh, interestingly, and what I'll say is, we found brotherhood. Mm -hmm. I think just like how you see even in the family setup, when a girl uh, becomes a tomboy, mm -hmm. she'll still find acceptance from the boys. Mm -hmm. The boys are like, okay, fine, you're a girl, but they, there's acceptance. One of the things I can say is we found a family that was willing to <coughs> accommodate us. The males in the spot, and maybe they were also curious. I guess, ah, yeah, maybe they were yes. coming us and curiously mm -hmm. wanting to see whatever has uh, lured you here. I'll say from the fans, everybody was... Uh, some, of, some people write you off. Mm -hmm. What are you coming to do here? Mm -hmm. You have better things you can do at home. Mm -hmm. So it was mixed, but for those who are active in the sport, they welcomed us. Lots of jokes, and they were like, ah, you ladies, and there you go for pedicures. Now you're expecting to change uh, uh, manicures, and you'll change punctures. Mm -hmm. So there was that, but there was a lot of help. Mm -hmm. If you need our help, ask us. Mm -hmm. So lots of tips we got about uh, what happens if the car breaks down when you're in the sections. Uh -huh. You're deep uko. Uh -huh. So is there a first aid that you can uh, do? Uh -huh. So one of the things I'll say and here talking to uh, the girl child, uh -huh. let me address the girl child. Uh -huh. Because you find when we go to school, we are learning the same subjects. Yeah, sure. There are no subjects for girls and subjects for the boys. Uh -huh. When we go through university, we are taking the same courses. We have uh, doctors, we have engineers, we have you know lawyers. So what's the difference then in this sport? Mm -hmm. Why the discrimination? But I'll say it's a societal thing. Because women and cars, they always say they don't uh, mesh. Mm -hmm. So we are also the ones who have also created that space. So I'm not good at this. I can't reverse. I can't because you've been uh, socialized to think that a car belongs to the man. Yeah. But if you look at it this way, nowadays, a lot of our ladies are driving. You take your children to school, you go to work, you mm -hmm. are farming, you are doing so much. So it's time now to embrace this. So my advice is to the girl child is, it's not a competition that we have here. We have the equal opportunity. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I'll let them know in motorsport, we don't have like the way we have in other sports. If you look at volleyball, we have a ladies team and a man's team. Mm -hmm. If you go to even football, all the yeah, sports yeah, have sure. ladies. Motorsport does not have a ladies team. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. It is one team. It is one team. team the one. same hardship that the guys are going through is the same that you will go. There is no like what we call in golf a handicap. Mm -hmm. Nothing. You start and finish the same and the results are the same. Mm -hmm. You have a puncture, your car is uh, overheating, you're in the sections, sort it. The, the, there are no light at penalties for the lady and Zia Palembele. No. Mm -hmm. that it's among the few spots that we have where you compete on an equal platform. That's motorsport for you. Mm -hmm. So it also calls for you to get better because when we look at young boys, they are interested in gadgets. Mm -hmm. For the young girls, possibly when we were growing up, we were more kitchen dolls and all that. So we are behind when it comes to the technology of cars. But being behind does not mean you can't catch up. Mm -hmm. What you don't know, what do I say? Go learn and come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you didn't know some basics about your car, go learn come back you're good mm -hmm. and so in normal days do you like uh, find yourself driving at the same speed 
like in the land. Have no. you ever crashed with Kenyan police because of never? Speeding? And there's one thing I want to tell the audience mm -mm. is that if there are people who follow traffic rules, it's rally drivers. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you the reason why. A rally car has safety measures put into it. We have one, a roll cage. Mm -hmm. If you have watched motorsport and a rally car yes. rolls, it doesn't crash because it has a safety roll cage. We also wear fireproof wear when we're in the car. We have fire extinguishers. We have so many safety measures in that car. The, the kind of suspension and tires we use is not your normal car. If you look at the belting up, we have a six point belting up. You and the seat are one. Look at our normal cars, it's just a black. Mm -hmm. So most rally people differentiate between this standard car, if I may call it our normal cars on the road, and a rally prepared car. You are more fearful than the person who doesn't know. Wow. So you will find one, we are very obedient to the traffic rules, and we don't speed. Again, I say, why am I speeding on the road? There's someone who learned how to drive and uh, have just bought their first car. There's someone who's very stressed from work. There's someone undergoing various, you know, there's someone who's high, they, they under substance abuse or alcohol. And we're all on the same highway. Mm -hmm. But now in the spot, they designate a place for us to go and rally. Mm -hmm. But on the highway, you are meeting people who are not interested in the spot. Why would you go, you know, uh, driving and uh, making other people feel really uncomfortable on the highway? You've never got the temptation like, to I show people like this is me. The temptation. I'll tell you, even when <laughs> alcohol blow came, uh -huh. I said I would never be caught up. You know, so m I am a very obedient uh, nini, uh, tra tra road user. In fact, oh. my friends ask me, I, from the way you're driving on the road, are you sure you are a rally driver? because those are two different things mm -hmm. so differentiate and i'll talk to the people who are driving especially the subaru guys mm -hmm. subaru guys you know yourselves eh please if you want to take part and you want to drive as fast go to designated areas uh -huh. do stop jeopardizing the lives of other kenyans with the madness that we see on the roads nowadays mm -hmm. yeah where you see a sign the speed limit is 100 you're doing 160 why the person who put that sign there knew why it was good to have a speed limit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if we could obey the rules, if we could join the sport, if you really feel that you have a passion for the sport for high speed, go do it elsewhere. The other thing I always say, do you have, have you ever seen a football match on tarmac? Mm -hmm. They go to the, the stadium mm -hmm. and play there. So why am I playing motorsport? on a road that is not designated for that. Wow. Ask yourself discipline. that. <laughs> discipline, discipline, <laughs> discipline. A lot of people I know want to know what is, what is your Larry car? What kind of car is it? Uh, now, when I started rallying, the Subaru was the in thing, Subaru Impreza. Mm -hmm. So even for me, it was the car of choice. Mm -hmm. And it didn't let me down, by the way. Mm -hmm. Fine, you don't finish all rallies, but I'm saying in the kick it gave me, I guess most people who know Subarus, there is also the, the yeah, noise yeah, yeah. of the Subaru. Now, adding to that plus the speed, so I drove a Subaru Impreza. Mm -hmm. When I get back into the spot, I don't think Subaru will be the car of choice. Mm -hmm. It's been uh, overtaken, but there are more uh, sophisticated cars that are out there now. Mm -hmm. We have like the Toyota Yaris, we have the Hyundai, mm -hmm. we have the Ford Fiesta, we have the Skoda. We have the Evolution, Mitsubishi Evolution 10, so we are spoiled for choice. Mm -hmm. There are so many cars right now that are, are faster, are good, so I believe I'll go for a different car. Wow. Yeah. What is that one moment you remember and you are like, wow, this was the day for me? My greatest moment was Safari Rally 2010, mm -hmm. and uh, that was when we made history in Kenya uh -huh. by becoming the first indigenous ladies to ever finish the safari since inception in 1953 wow yeah so that was quite a moment that rally was very muddy <laughs> it was muddy and let me tell you when you don't have lessons on how to drive in mud uh -huh. you're in the car and your heart is beating because you're swaying this way this way that way but when we got back to kicc that was the moment that we did it we did it. Mm -hmm. So that has remained one of my greatest moments till today. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the fear, the most fearful one, like you. I'll give you the most fearful <laughs> was uh, a rally in Nanyuki, uh -huh. and we were in a section that had elephants. 
Uh-huh. And that was the Lol Diger stage. Mm -hmm. And the car stole, it was also muddy. Mm -hmm. So every time there was some, uh, something wrong with the electrical wiring. Mm -hmm. Every time we hit a mud hole, then the car stalled and stopped. After a few minutes, it would dry and would move on. So it's a rally we were struggling. And during one of those moments when the car had stalled, we could hear the elephants trumpeting. And they were just near. Wherever they were, they were near. I can tell you, I looked to know where would I hide? <laughs> can I go under? There's, you know, in Narali Kana, we don't have the luxury of those, the space. Mm -hmm. And I asked the navigator, how many more kilometers do we have to go? And she says, 17. Meaning, we are right in the heart of the forest. It's not a place I can abandon the car and run. And we were both quiet. As soon as the car started, nobody listened to the other. It was flight. How do we get out of the before the elephants find us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that has been one of my greatest. What would I do if the elephant came? Mm -hmm. But when you get to the end again, you say, mm, that was adventurous, by the way. <laughs> wow. Let's talk about uh, government and support to the motorsport and especially to women in the motorsport. Is there support for you people from the government? Uh, what I would say right now is that there is goodwill. Mm -hmm. There is goodwill uh, and uh, kudos to the CS, uh, Dr. Amina Mohammed, because she has really taken motorsport uh, back to where it was. If you remember since 2002, mm -hmm. we only got to see the WRC, that's the World Rally Championship cars, back last year, yeah. 2021. Yes. And that took a lot of effort and goodwill from the government. So that's a step forward. Mm -hmm. Just having the International Rally back here in Kenya was one. For the women, I would like to say that we have a commission called Women in Motorsport. And Women in Motorsport is enjoying support from the Federation. We are also now uh, being able, we are able to have a voice to engage the government mm -hmm. and to let them know that you can use this platform to speak to the girl child, to be able to also embrace uh, careers that they thought were only uh, set aside for the male, domin uh, for the male. Mm -hmm. So we shall use this to be able to bring in more women, let them understand, and then go to the government and be able to say that we ca you, you can use motorsport as a foundation mm -hmm. for the girl child to also explore and expand uh, in areas they never considered before. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and Stella, will we be seeing Stella back in the lab? I know you're on a break, sort of, <laughs> sort of a break. So yeah, I took a sabbatical, <laughs> but I can tell you very interesting that uh, there's a conversation going on. Mm -hmm. If not before the end of this year, I can promise you that next year we'll be back in the sport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, I have a conversation that uh, I have picked up mm -hmm. recently. A lot of people write to me and ask me, Stella, when? We are still waiting to see Warren Bobila make up uh, yes. back kicking dust. Talk about so, that. Warren Bobila makeup. Warren Bobila makeup. Yeah, and a lot of people wonder why Warren Bobila makeup. Yes, we know ladies. <laughs> Why Bila? I'll tell you in my first rally. Now the first, remember the one I mentioned? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was the only f lady uh, competitor on that day. So there was a lot of interest from the sponsors. Wow, we have a lady too. Ah. And one of the media houses followed me the whole day. They followed the progress, how we were doing, and we finished the rally. And they wanted to interview me. And you know, at the end of the rally, you are dusty. You know, you look like you've applied heat on your eyebrows and on your head. And now, you know, I'm a lady, I'm trying to tell the guy, you know something, mm -hmm. why don't you let me just jipodawa kidogo, then we have the interview. And he said, no. Vile Olivio, Bila Makeup. Ukom Rembo, so, oh. Ukom Rembo, Bila Makeup. Mm -hmm. When I did the team, it was Warembo, Bila Makeup. Oh. And it's something we saw, it resonated well even when we went Mashinani. Mm -hmm. Rembo, Bila Makeup. Mm. Look at uh, all the tribes that we have met when we've rallied across the country. Mm -hmm. We are beautiful without makeup. Mm -hmm. And we decided, by the way, it works. Don't start thinking that makeup is the one that will take you places. It's good. We feel good when we apply makeup, but you can still get the job done mm -hmm. without applying makeup. Mm -hmm. So that's how our Rainbow Bila makeup team came into being. 
And that's a rich point there, and I would love you to hammer it down to anyone watching us and thinking that uh, I have to look a certain way, I have to dress a certain way to achieve my goals, or to be perceived yes. by community in a certain way for me to succeed. Yeah, and uh, it's when we let others judge us, it means we don't believe in ourselves. By the way, when you believe in yourself, it does not matter whether you are bald, whether you have makeup, whether you just have a simple t-shirt on. It's what you carry within you that is more important than what you are showing people. People actually can read what's within you. Even if you dress in the most expensive and you're in the most expensive makeup, if you are empty and you have nothing to share with others, they'll still be able to see through your smartness. So I'm not saying it's bad to dress well. Don't uh, you know, get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But remember what you feed into your system, your inner, it glows out there and mm -hmm. makeup is just an enhancer makeup is good even i once in a while will do the makeup we are called for our wedding for our what do the makeup glam yourself but don't let it define you mm -hmm. let what is in, uh, inside of you be the definer that kind heart that good gesture those kind words that which you're sharing with the community with the youth let it define you mm -hmm. they'll stop looking at what you're wearing mm -hmm. yeah but when you are not speaking so much good people now start defining you by how you're dressed mm -hmm. they say you, you don't even know how to dress mm -hmm. why are you dressed in things that are revealing mm -hmm. yeah but at the end of the day ladies let us also dress appropriately let us as much as we want to be in uh, fashion let us portray to the world that we can be respected mm -hmm. not through how we look but how we speak an impact on society mm -hmm. yes well we are winding up and i know a lot of people would love to follow you up just to know when you're going back to the larry and follow you up through your journey yes so tell them where they can find you or how they can reach out to you uh, and also those who are willing to sponsor yes uh, one of the things i would say i'll start with the sponsors and tell them this that sponsoring a ladies team is a mobile billboard for your brand it will take you very far because people come out to see this uh, team competing in a male-dominated sport. So it's a mobile billboard and the curiosity, we will take you far. One of the things that we can tell a potential sponsor is that with us, you will be able to achieve that which you have set for your brand. For the people who would want to know how will I get myself into the sport, you can find me on Facebook, Stella Mutahi on Facebook. Uh, Warembo Bila Makeup on uh, Instagram. You can still, uh, I don't know if I can share a number. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind, I can share my number with them. My number is 0721 0721791265. I'm willing and able to share with those who would want to be mentored into the motorsport. I will connect you to all the platforms that you need to learn as much as you need to and welcome and let's grow the sport and especially you the girl child i'm waiting for you on the other side <laughs> well i know the boy child is complaining like why aren't you talking to us but anyway anyone wishing to be mentored on motorsport please hook up with her thank you so much for honoring the invite thank you. we are humbled so that's it for the day i was with stella mutahi uh motorsport Motorsport, or yeah, motorsport? yeah, or rally driver. Larry driver. <laughs> Let's yeah. just say it's Larry driver. And uh, we are excited. It's been a conversation. See you after this short commercial break. <laughs>